This is a spaceship. This is a portal. And this is an alien dubstep DJ. This is No Man's Sky, a game where you can explore infinite possibilities, mine resources, and build bases. I will be spending the next 100 days discovering all that this universe has to offer. Welcome to my 100 days in No Man's Sky. We wake up here on this random planet. How did we get here? Maybe we were abducted by aliens and anal probed, then dumped here to die. Or maybe our parents left us here to go get milk from the store. We'll probably never know. Where the heck am I? I begin to gather as many resources around this area as I possibly could, since resources are kind of what we're going to need to survive and I'll take just about anything. Then we get this urgent message on screen that there's a distress call, so I guess we head over that way. We venture over the mountain ridge to spot a crashed spaceship and proceed to speak to this device that kind of looks like BB-8 from Star Wars. Do you know that little droid? BB-8, is that you? It then says some stuff from this glowing red ball but I'm not really interested in game dialogue, so we continue over to the crashed ship and enter it. Seems like we can claim this ship as our own, which in some cultures, this might be considered kind of rude, but hey, find us keepers, am I right? Unfortunately, we can't actually take off until we repair this thing. We are told to go over to this location to receive an item to repair it. So I head on over there, but on our way, we're caught in this radiation storm. We then made it to the location where there was a set of two buildings. Once we had entered the building, we escaped the radiation storm and stopped receiving any damage from it. Then we went over to this thing here on the wall that gave us the hermetic seal that we need to repair our ship. There was also this damaged machinery that was there on the way out. So I collected it and we scored an A-class shield module. That's pretty good for the early game. We then made it back to the ship and made the repairs that were necessary for it to take off. So of course, we, we took off and took our first voyage into space. Day 2 we followed this mission marker all the way to this paradise planet which led us to what I could only assume is R2-D2's dead uncle. It then taught us how to make a base computer and a terrain manipulator. Both pretty crucial items in this game. First thing I made was a terrain manipulator and then I went out and started harvesting all this copper from this resource deposit. Now copper is probably the most used resource in this game. You need it for just about basically everything. I then went and found this nice little flat area and then flattened it out even more and then started placing down my main base. As we were building it though a little storm came over so we had to be kind of quick on getting all these parts down. Once we had the base all set up I went ahead and named it. We named it subscribe please. Yeah, you see what I did there? You see what I did there? Yeah, uh, please subscribe. Once the storm cleared, I then laid down this teleport module so that we could get around the entire universe, you know, quickly. It, it's You basically put it down everywhere you go. And then powered it with the biofuel reactor. Day three, the first thing we did was get on our ship and fly off to the space station. I wanted to go and introduce myself to the locals around here. Turns out we're in a Gek galaxy, which is these little space oompa loompas. We were instructed to ask them all about the number 16. I don't know what that means now, but later on in the story, we do find out. Then the first thing I basically like to do every time I come to a space station is come over to the exosuit upgrade because at every space station, you have this exosuit upgrade that's always available. So you upgrade it. Then I went over to this nifty contraption. It's an appearance modifier, so I can basically change the way I look. Oh, what the heck is he doing here? You see, this is Gaelic. He's my super ripped single green cousin, and he's from today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Now, Raid Shadow Legends is my personal favorite mobile RPG to play on the move, or even when I'm sleeping. One of my favorite features is the multi-battle feature. I can literally set it and forget it. Then when I wake up, my party is way stronger and I have a ton of loot. Now, if we go to the portal here, I've got a ton of shards. So let's open them up. Let's see what we get. This, this could be good or, or could be bad. We'll see. Holy visionary. Okay. She got Bunda. Can't see. Let's open up another sacred shard. Ah, oh, Kinagashi. The Shadowkin. I ain't gonna lie. This guy is cool. Last sacred shard. Who are we gonna get? Ooh, this is creepy. She kind of looks like my Auntie Rita when she wakes up in the morning. <laughs> see, the thing is, you can't really get a bad champion because if you don't like the champions, you can then just use them to upgrade your other champions. Like, bro, it's a win-win. With Raid Call of the Arbiter being the hot new thing this month, Raid Shadow Legends is getting a fat new update with a load of cool new content related to this limited series. We're talking new new champions, new artifact sets, events, and more. There's even a whole load of champion bios that have just been added to the game. With all this exciting stuff coming to Raid, if you haven't started playing yet, what are you waiting for? Use my link in the description or scan my QR code that's probably like around here somewhere to get some insane bonuses. Just like this epic champion Drake and other useful things. Once you're in and crushing your enemies, come find me under the name Aaron Aztec. So just hit my link in the description and you'll see me in game. Thank you Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. And this is what we ended up with. 
Uh, I don't kind of love it, but uh, we can unlock some other skins later. Then we went back to following the main storyline, which sent us to this distress signal that led us to the crashed freighter. And we went over to find yet another dead BB-8. This one taught us the blueprint for the hyperdrive module though. With that, we can then explore other galaxies and really opens up the universe. But of course, since we were here, I couldn't stop and help myself to all the free loot that was around. The main mission basically sends us all the way back to the space station so we can go and buy some microprocessors, which is a part that we need to be able to install the hyperdrive in our spaceship. Day four of this epic space journey, we were sent back to our starting planet to go and investigate this abandoned building that has been overtaken by, I don't even know what that is. Once investigated, we then got the blueprints to learn antimatter, another item that we're gonna need to be able to fuel our hyperdrive. On the way out though, I had to break these whispering eggs. Oh, level cores, we're gonna be rich. Rich, 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 yes, baby. Ooh. I can sell these and get lots of nanites too. Oh, ow, what the frick? And now that we have the fuel source to be able to warp to another system, I did exactly that. So we went to this neighboring system that then sent us to this monolith that has some important lore to the story, but in the game, it just teaches you words. The ancient monolith basically speaks to us and asks if I'm a traveler or if I'm a friend. I tell us I'm a traveler. And then it asked me if I've ever seen the Crimson Eye. No, I haven't, but I have seen Star Wars Empire Strikes Back, and that's pretty ancient. Day 5, while we were traveling through space, we got interrupted and called from a random number. They told us that we were not alone and asked us to identify ourselves. And then they said, you left me, why did you? This sounds like a stalker crazy ex-girlfriend. I then continue on with our main mission, which sends us to this planet. It tells us to land at a strange location that's actually not where we're supposed to be. On our way over though, we did see a little sad moment. It looks like this creature is mourning the death of its parent. Oh, poor little puppy. Your mummy's dead. Now so are you. We eventually find what we're looking for, and it's another crashed spaceship. We then go speak to another Star Wars droid, and it teaches us the advanced mining laser. And since there's a broken spaceship here, I mean, it's not a great one, and it looks kind of ugly, but uh, I'm taking it. The problem is, it's kind of broken, so we need to fix it before we can take off. But once we eventually fix it, we then obviously take off. And then the freaking Death Star just comes out of nowhere. Apparently it's called the Anomaly. Of course, curiosity gets the better of me, so we enter it. This place is pretty damn cool. It's basically like an online multiplayer hub, so all players can kind of meet here. But we came here to meet this guy. His name's Nada. I don't know what he does, but maybe he's like an EDM DJ or something. He instructs us to go and meet most of the staff on this spaceship. So we introduce ourselves to this little get guy. His name's Polo. Then we meet Groot's uncle Helios. And yeah, we'll, we'll basically meet everyone else a little bit later. But for now, we head on over to this area. This is basically the research area that helps you learn a ton of blueprints for your exosuit, your starship, your multi-tool, like all the crafting things in game, really. We learn how to make the hazmat gauntlets, then I learned the oxygen harvester and the medium refiner. And since I had some nanites spare, I couldn't leave without getting the teleport receiver for our spaceship. This just allows us to be able to transfer some items to our spaceship from a little bit of a further distance than basically right next to it. To finish off this day, we went back to the space station with our newly acquired spaceship and scrapped it so we could make some money off all the parts off of it. We made over 2 million units from it, but the money didn't last very long though. There was a B-class weapon that was a little bit better than what we had already. It had more slots and it was just all around better. So I exchanged my weapon for it and yeah, well we have a fancy new weapon, but we are now broke. With our brand new weapon, we went back out near our base to go and harvest as many resources as I could really be bothered getting. And since we're starting to gather so much, I figured now's a good time to make ourselves a storage compartment. I now went over to our base computer, and then it taught us the blueprints for the solar panel and the battery. Now we're gonna have electricity. I mean, we already have it, but that, I mean, this is just some more. I had discovered that there was a building right near my base, and I investigated it a little bit further. It was another one of those abandoned buildings that seemed to be taken over by, uh, you, you know, all that stuff but it also had all the whispering eggs around it. And there's a little bit of a cheesy strat that I wanted to try out. Apparently you dig a hole underneath the eggs, then you shoot the eggs to make them fall into the hole. And apparently those little alien critters can't get down to you. Oh, how could this free lava course? You can't get me, you can't get me. Day seven, we discover another monolith and learn some more words in this Gek language. The monolith gives us a morality question. The poor animal has clearly broken its neck, but some power of possession still animates it. What do I do? I chose to leave the creature alone. Then, uh, turns out the poor winged creature dies anyway. We return back to the space station with one goal in mind. It's time to make some decent money. And a good way to do that early game is to head on over to the cartographer and buy the emergency cartographic data. Th this one. I also remembered that we had some upgrades that we hadn't sold yet from the ship that we scrapped a little bit earlier. 
I sold them to the exosuit guy. Looking back on it, I probably should have kept these modules because they're actually pretty good. It did allow me to buy a movement module though. We're now given another mission that sends us over to this hollow terminus. But in order to get it to work, we had to feed it some sodium. Luckily, I farmed a ton of that earlier. Oh, what's going on? What? Oh. Holy, it's a... Oh, there's a guy there. Artemis. Hello, Artemis. Oh, whoa, you look just like me. Are you my mother that left me here to go to the shops? Artemis then explains to me that we are travelers. Basically just explorers of worlds. It seems like we have to discover where he is in the entire universe. So he sends us off on another mission, which requires us to use these things, signal boosters. Now we need to place three of these down. So I place the first one down right down below the hollow terminus. All right, the signal boosters down, triangulate position. Now what? Oh, shiny light. And then it gives us another location to go and find. The morning of day eight, we'll send to another location to put down another signal booster. Upon arrival, we realized this was a cargo pod. So your boy really wants some extra slots in his exosuit. I then placed in the sodium nitrate, made a carbon nanotube to place in there. But when it came to the antimatter housing, I didn't have enough oxygen. Fortunately, with a quick scan of the area, there was this hazardous flora plant and you can kill them for oxygen. And boom, baby, we now have another exosuit slot. We almost left without placing down a signal booster. Oh, I can't believe we almost forgot to do this. Oh, will you look at that? We got sent to another location to place down our third and final signal booster. Now we're done. We then had to fly back up into space so we could get a good signal to be able to speak to Artemis once again. But then he sent us all the way back to another holo terminus to record our data. We arrive at the holo terminus and talk to Artemis once again. I don't really understand why we have to talk to him here and up in the sky. Like, why can't we have one conversation in one place? Moving on with our missions, we were instructed to go and meet this little get guy. But this little prick doesn't want to do any business with us because we don't have a high enough reputation rank. Now, I should be heading to the space terminal to be able to get some gek missions, which will help raise our gek which will help raise our gek rank but no it's time for us to be able to forge our own path in this 100 days journey and i met with this four-eyed cartographer to buy some map locations so we can go find some stuff in order to upgrade our exosuit and earn some serious dollars yes two of the things that we got before our exosuit upgrades don't know if i mentioned this already but being able to hold more things in our inventory is going to make life so much easier hey look the death star is back no we brought it in why you may ask well that's because we're actually heading into it to collect something that will hopefully change our game for the better. We just need to visit this guy. Oh, hey there, Mr. Two-Eyed Robot Weirdo. Get the Expedition Awards out. Aha, there it is, the Utopia Speeder. 1,400 nanites, that's like all I've got. Oh, well, it's probably worth it. So you can only unlock this by doing expeditions in No Man's Sky, which I've done in the past, just I haven't recorded it. But if you do want to see me do expeditions in the future, Make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and let me know in the comments whether you want to see it or not. Day 10, you know the first thing we needed to do was jump straight in our brand new spacecraft. I flew straight up into space to test out its handling capabilities, and it handles just so damn well. This machine is so much easier to handle. See, even in-game me agrees. I quickly melted some space rocks so I could gather some tritium and went back down to the planet because we had a distress signal that we had to go and investigate. And score, it was another abandoned, broken down spaceship. This time an A-class. Holy crap, it's an A-class. Which basically means it's going to be worth a lot of dollary dues. Now, of course, I took it straight to the space station to go and scrap it so I could make some juicy, juicy money. Oh, yeah. Two million units? I'll take that. Thank you. And for some reason, the radiant pillar spaceship is the one that comes back i don't want this damn thing how do i make the the other one come in by default i have no idea how to make it that my utopian speeder comes back instead of this if you know comment below oh well will you look at that Six million. another broken down spaceship <laughs> we fully repaired this spaceship and then flew back into space to head to the space station but on our way we were stopped by a pirate we can afford to get to a fight right now oh crap i can't fight i can't fight our guns were down, our shield was down. I had enough resources to be able to fix our shield at least. And the photon cannon. I guess we have no other choice but to fight this pirate in this banged up ship. Oh man, why did you have to come and ruin our day? Come back. Come back. Oh, your shield's down. Go down, go down, go down, yes! We killed it, we killed it, we killed it. You're dead, stupid pirate. 
Scrapping this ship fetches us another 1.3 million units. And once we successfully sold everything, we now have 3.9 million units in total. Now it might seem like a lot, but you can go through that amount of units quite quickly in this game. I then decided to go visit a whole new system. And the first planet that we spotted was this one. It had a few resources on it that I really wanted to get my hands on. Upon landing and doing a quick scan of the area, we spotted some metal fingers in the distance. Metal fingers are these things. It takes kind of a long time to harvest the metal fingers, but once you finally harvest them, you get a crazy amount of the selected resource that you can see there. But the main reason I was really excited to come to this planet was for this thing. Once you destroy it, you collect what's called salvageable scrap. Unfortunately, once you do destroy it, it calls in some pesky sentinels. I can't really be bothered with these guys, so I just jump in my ship and fly away. They're not like the proper sentinels, so it's not like that they will hunt you down afterwards. I did find another location with some more salvageable scrap, so I collected that, and then I made my way to the space station to sell it all. When I went to sell it though, it wasn't actually worth that much money, but I'll take what I can get for now. Finding ourselves in another warp, we came to another system, but this one had a big black hole in it. We're going in the black hole. Let's see what happens. Oh my god, we're gonna die. When we came out of it, we found that there was a freighter in distress getting wrecked by some pirates. But we're in our brand new S-Class Utopian Speeder. Yeah, what you got, pirate boy? Get sprayed by my bullets. Or lasers, I don't even know what the frick they're called. Bro, these guys are getting melted. You're dead. See you later, alligator. Don't forget you're fucking gay. After getting that message that all the hostile ships were defeated, we were then invited by the captain of the ship to board the freighter. Now kids, if a strange alien from space tells you to just board their ship, uh, this is a bad example of what to do. No, but for real, if you actually defeat the pirates from a freighter battle like this, you can actually take the freighter for free. You don't need to buy it. But this is only a C-Class and I'm not really interested in taking this freighter. We will get one a little bit later on though. Instead, we just ask for some payment and head on our way. Day 12, we land on Isper V11. We came here because this planet holds a kind of rarish resource. This, Phosphorus. Since it's the early game, it's good to stock up on as many resources as we possibly can. Just hold on to them because you find yourself sometimes when you're out in the galaxy just exploring, needing that specific resource and it's nowhere close to be found. So it's good to just hold on to stuff while you can. And for our second warp of the day, we find ourselves a frosty planet, which also holds a resource that we should gather right now. Deoxide. I'm pretty sure I'm butchering some of these resource names and you know, it is what it is. My bad. Day 13, we landed on Lulu K37 and just randomly found a cargo pod without having to really look for it. And to make things even better with a quick scan of the area, we spotted some more metal fingers. Ooh, we struck gold, literally. Day 14, I teleported back to my local Gek system. I wanted to come back so I could complete some Gek missions so I could increase my Gek standing so then I could eventually go and complete more of these main missions. And the first Gek mission that we had, we needed to collect 250 Phosphorus. And this is exactly why we collect it when we can, just in case we need it. Since we already have it on hand, we can go ahead and just deliver it to wherever it needs to be. And it's just this close little trade terminal that we need to go to. The second mission that we had, we had to warp to another system because we needed to find ourselves a volcanic planet so we could capture a picture of it. Random request, but hey, we gotta do what we gotta do. After scanning all the planets in the system, I couldn't figure out which one was the volcanic one. It turns out it's this ash shrouded planet. I mean, it makes sense once you think about it, but yeah, it, it just, I thought it would be a little bit more obvious. Okay, so we gotta take a photo of this planet somehow. I think a good photo of maybe the volcano might be the way to go. All right, we'll zoom out. Ooh, get the back of my head, no. Uh, yeah, I'm happy with that. Did we do it? Yes, we got it. Oh crap, is that aggressive? Oh, I'm dead. One thing I like about these missions is you can hand them in in any system that you're at, as long as you just hand it into the mission agent. We did exactly that and took all of our loot and all the glory. It was great. Day 15, we've made enough progress out in the galaxy to be able to work a little bit on our base. Our first little addition to our base is this Roma Gia Bay. I've never actually used this exocraft before, but I was kind of excited to give it a go. I mean, it's cool, but it's kind of basic. I think it'll be a lot better once we upgrade it. Then I built a landing pad because I was kind of getting sick of the spaceship just, you know, spawning in in random places like stuck into our walls and stuff day 16 we were sent to go fetch this corrupt archive data from this desolate hot planet and we found it inside this abandoned building 
We were sent here by our base computer, so we're likely to learn another blueprint when we get back to base. But since we're here, you know, we got to do some exploring, which led us to these rocks with some Christmas tree lights on them. They're called solar vines. And since we had previously installed the hazmat gauntlets on us, I could go ahead and harvest them. Look, I'm pretty new to No Man's Sky and I'm not sure what resources are good for what, so I just take what I can get when I can get it. Upon searching a little further, we came across a space station that was inhabited by these little get guy. We went and spoke to him, but he spoke in his language that we still yet to understand. They reached down with their beak and dejectedly peck at the exosuit, faded and torn. It will offer little protection in this blazing heat outside. With three options given, I decided to give him some sodium. Because after all, sodium's an important mineral to keeping your body, kids. Just make sure you're adequately hydrated. Must have been a good decision because our ranking with the Gex just increased. Day 17, a marker with a skull symbol appeared. So, like any smart adventurer, we went to it. Again, it sends us to some vague location that we need to try and figure out where the actual location is. 650, oh man, we're gonna run for ages. We finally made it to the skull symbol and noticed that it was a broken down ship. We followed the same steps as normal, went up to our BB-8 droid, spoke to it, but then it triggered some security thing. There were sentinels around, but I wanted to see what kind of ship this was. And it was a B-class. Nothing better than what I have already, but it was free, so, you know, it was worth killing these sentinels to be able to take it. We took our brand new broken down spaceship straight into space and saw that the skull symbol was just floating in the middle of space. I'm supposed to follow the skull symbol, but I got a brand new spaceship that I need to go and scrap real quick. So let's go do that. <laughs> this was discovered seven years ago by Team UK on Xbox. That's crazy. We're back in the good old radiant pillar and heading over to the skull in the middle of space. Oh, look, broken down ship. Oh, this is an ambush. Rip. Ah, that's... Four hostiles. Oh my God, and I'm in my shitty ship. That's one down, two down. Three down. Four. All right, let's continue. We continue on this mission set by finding this next abandoned building. And this is where we discover what these missions are really about. It's called the Voice of Freedom. And in summary, they're like the rebels of the universe that don't want to be held down by any government or political restraints. In other words, they do whatever the f they want. Day 18, we continued on this rebellious mission path by warping to another system and was instructed to dock in this outlaw space station. What the frick is this place? And this is where we ended up. This is the outlaw space station. Now we're in the ghetto. You can tell it's a little bit run down, a little bit slummy. It's where the pirates hang out. I then went and approached this Viking gentleman and then asked him about the voice of freedom. He wasn't much help. So we went over to these guys and asked them. They just say some stuff that kind of gives me like cult vibes. Then I finally speak to this get guy and I don't remember what he said, but we did get the shroud of freedom helmet. Now we're instructed to go speak to some of these vendors, probably just to learn what they do. This little gentleman here sells us suspicious upgrade modules. This yellow little geck is the bounty master. He basically just gives us missions for like the outlaw regions. And this is the contraband agent where we can kind of trade stolen goods or well, any goods really, but he, he, he trades in stolen stuff mainly. And finally, I went to go speak to the station core and requested the voice of freedom. Give me your freedom. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think anything happened, but we, we did kind of complete that mission, I suppose. We're now told to leave the space station, but before I do, I wanted to change the appearance of my character once again. Since we got the Shroud of Freedom helmet, I wanted to put it on. I mean, shiny new cool thing like that, why not? I mixed up my character a little bit and added a cape on him, made him short and stumpy. No, I, I couldn't do that. It, it looks stupid. Let's give him a more heroic body shape. We then left this outlaw space station and saw a freighter right outside the station. I got close to this freighter to see what cargo was holding and then scanned all the cargo pods around, looking to see if this was going to be worth it. Oh, counterfeit circuits. We are on, baby. Let's go. Now, I wanted to destroy all these cargo pods and everything so I could claim some of their counterfeit goods, stuff that you can only find in outlaw systems. Now, the reason I really only do this in outlaw systems is because, and correct me if I'm wrong, I haven't been playing this long enough, but if you fight these freighters in normal systems, the sentinels will come and try and F you up. Whereas in an outlaw system, you can just go ahead and go crazy on all these freighters. The only catch being you do decrease your ranking with the selected race of that was holding down this area. By the end of this, the Gex didn't really like us too much, but we did get a ton of black market goods 
That we can go and sell in normal systems for a ton of money. Unfortunately, if we did attempt to do that, we would get arrested and all of our stuff would get taken unless we head back to the anomaly and learn this piece of tech, the cargo scan deflector. I installed the cargo scan deflector into my utopian speeder and then thought of a big brain move. We're in the anomaly and the anomaly has teleporters that can teleport to anywhere. So we just teleported to a non-outlaw system and was able to sell our goods without having to worry about our goods getting seized by any like officials. And just like that, we've gone from 5.8 million units to 12.5 million well over double i had to also make sure that we fixed up our standing with the gex because we did kind of piss them off a little bit and if you have a forged passport you can increase your standing a little bit at this terminal day 19 we received a new mission the settlers we fly down to this paradise planet which just so happens to be the same planet that our main base is on and discover this settlement we head on over to this little oompa loompa and find out that he is the man that sent us the distress signal to send us here apparently sentinels have arrived it's time to go and fight one man against all these sentinels oh hey little dude how can i help you i don't know what you're saying the little alien hops around grateful for your assistance in fighting the sentinels but it's clear they're tired of worn down from the fight Th they didn't fight dude anyway thank you i suppose you didn't even help we discover that there's an overseer's position available i just need to go over here and see what this settlement's all about so this is a c-class settlement and usually i'd want something a little bit better its productivity and maintenance costs aren't too bad we can kind of fix it up pretty quickly so i invest in this settlement and take claim of it usually i'd try and find something a little bit better but we're in a 100 days challenge and i don't really want to waste my time with this but before we can become a real overseer we have to repair the overseer's office and this can take a little bit of time good thing we've got the magic of editing on our hands ta-da that's the overseer's office this overseer's office comes fully equipped with a little oompa loompa that just sits there a base terminal and this is the administration terminal where we make decisions and stuff first decision we make is obviously the factory module because it gives us plus seventy-seven thousand productivity and once you increase the productivity it helps speed up the production of these items that you see in the bottom here we of course have to supply the materials to be able to build it first i decided to rename this settlement because Vagum bin tied or whatever that says uh, it's really hard to say instead we're gonna call this the united republic of cuck lords day 20 i had a planetary chart on me so for a fun little distraction we followed the chart's location to go and discover this ancient ruin now i always thought that this took you to places like the monolith or like knowledge stone kind of area so we could learn more of the language in this particular case that's not the case it's literally just an ancient ruin with a couple building pieces just hanging out of the ground well that's what i thought until i opened up the scanner and saw if we dug a little bit down we discovered more of the ruin underground that also led us to these boxes that gave us an ancient key except when we dug down to this one it was a large artifact crate and requires three ancient keys to be able to unlock it now surely there's going to be something worthwhile in this crate so i dug around collected the last remaining keys that we needed and then unlocked this crate and that's when we received these ornate rings that is approximately 811 years old almost as old as your mum. day 21 we warped into a new system and straight into a freighter battle and look at that that's a capital freighter hopefully it's a decent class because i want it for free there weren't that many pirates and they were pretty easy to defeat with our utopian speeder we got the message to board the freighter and went ahead and did exactly that yeah i like these freighters this looks like a good freighter give it to me for free baby Please be an A or S class. Please be an A or an S class. Please be an A or an S class, please. Yes, it's an A class. 34 slots too. Oh, let's go. Hey there, Mr. Commander. I did, I did, I did, I don't know what you're saying, but I know that you're going to give me this freighter for free. Storage space, pretty good. Uh, the hyperdrive kind of sucks. Tons of space. I'm going to claim the heck out of you. And just like that, we now earn our very own freighter ship. It's time for a freighter tour. Oh, what's that? I think it's just decoration. Oh, Gravitino balls and four, they're the four slots, like planting area. Yeah, that's definitely just a decoration. I'll take it, that's not bad. Even though we just got our freighter and I want to mess around with it a little bit, we still had a mission that we needed to continue on. And the marker yet again led us to this location that's nowhere near where I actually need to be. Whilst making the trek to the location of this mission, I spotted a big fat chunk of copper and I couldn't avoid harvesting this. And of course, just my luck, whilst I was harvesting this copper, a toxic storm rolled in. 
And when you're stuck on a planet, the best thing to do is just dig a hole as far down as possible and wait out the storm. Freedom! Oh, this planet looks nice now. Oh, we're right next to the location. I made it to the location, which is yet another abandoned building. Look, some of the content in this game is kind of repetitive, so I'm trying to cut it out, make it flow a bit better for you guys. But sometimes it just is what it is. Like, for example, I couldn't leave here once again without taking some lava cores. They're just way too valuable. Scanning the area once again, spotted a floating crystals and sack venom. I don't know what sack venom is, but if I see that gold marker on my scanner, I want to go and investigate. I'm going to take it all. Oh, whoa. Oh, crap. It destroyed all my gear. Run, 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 run. I had to dig a hole underground to see what was going on with my gear. My shield was down. My life support unit was down. That was annoying. We lost the aggression from the sentinels and continued on to go collect these floating crystals. These floating crystals drop glowing minerals, which you collect in your inventory, but then you can open them up and discover that you might have some rare resources and minerals that you've never been able to come across any other way other than buying them from the store day 22 i made my way back to the space station and whilst i was there this happened oh is that what i think it is oh, it is it's a freaking exotic an s-class exotic oh crap we don't have a lot of money though hold on let's see what he wants us to pay for it 26 million units we could exchange it for zero units but i don't want to lose this ship Damn it. Well, we definitely missed the chance on this one. That's pretty disappointing. But our luck was definitely not over. We went and visited the weapons terminal, checked out the rifle that was inside, and it was an A-class with a damage potential of 6,500. Holy crap, 6,500 damage potential? Oh, I need this gun. Luckily for me, this time, I had the cash to be able to buy this. We didn't need our other tool, so I just exchanged it for this. The next task for today, I walked back to our settlement to see what was going on and if they needed any help with anything. And there was a citizen's dispute happening. They were disputing over whether like the planetary specialist of over a neuron bridge or something, whether it was fake or not. I ended up just dismissing the claim because I didn't understand anything that was happening right there. I then flew back out to space to get an emergency distress signal. It was from my settlement. Apparently they're under attack. I quickly flew back and basically just handled my business. These sentinels are such bullies. They keep bullying my little Oompa Loompas. They can be a real pain in the ass sometimes. Day 23, we took a trip back to our newly acquired freighter to do some work around it. Our first job was to speak to the navigator, this guy. He then tells us that he's got a frigate ready to go and go do some missions for us, but we need to make sure we have a fleet command room first. So I go ahead and place one of them down. Sorry, no, I placed down four in total. And that unlocks the frigate fuel blueprints. With the fleet command rooms available, we can now send frigates out to go do some missions for us. If you're wondering what a frigate is, it's basically like a kind of smaller spaceship that goes out and does missions for you over a period of time while you, you know, do whatever else you need to do. It's basically like passive income. With our frigates all sorted, it's time to expand our freighter base. A place in the refiner room because that kind of works like the large refiner. It's actually really OP to have. Next, I place in a storage room. Then I head over to the large refiner and refine all the lava cores that I've been collecting over this whole time. Look at all those sweet nanites that we're getting. And since we just got a crap load of nanites, I couldn't help myself but go straight back to the anomaly and basically spend them all and learn some more blueprints. You can never have too many blueprints. Since I'm here at the anomaly, I wanted to try out one of these Nexus missions. When I checked it, I saw this mission gave us the salvaged frigate module. I don't care what the mission is, I want to do that because these frigate modules are really helpful. This mission sends us to a random system then to a random planet and requires us to tame like 40 animals or creatures or whatever the hell they are on this these kind of planets what would you call them they're technically animals right when flying down to the planet i saw that there was another abandoned ship but i got out of my ship and i realized it wasn't actually abandoned oh man i thought this place was abandoned who are you crazy dj got his broken down in his ship investigate yeah whatever dude I'm here on a different mission. I'm going to handle that. Yeah, so since the ship's not completely abandoned, we can't claim it and get a free ship. So instead, I decided to continue on our main Nexus mission and tame up some of these creatures. This mission took us a lot longer than I thought it would, like basically the entire day to complete it. But it was a massive relief when we did. Obviously, the first thing I did was flew straight back to the anomaly to hand in this mission so I could claim my salvage frigate module. Day 25, I returned back to our settlement only to have to fight some more sentinels that were lurking around and messing up our little Oompa Loompas. They can be such a pest sometimes. 
After defeating the Sentinels, I flew back to the Anomaly to go and speak to some of the inhabitants that we've never actually spoken to in the Anomaly. I spoke with Mercury, this uh, kind of creepy looking guy, the pink catfish brain looking alien, Gemini aka E.T.'s long lost uncle, and a wannabe Furby doll. Then we went back to the main mission guy Tethys, so he could then give us this. It's like our very own little sentinel, but it's, it's good, I think. To discover more about this sentinel, I went back to our settlement and summoned it in. It's a kind of a little bit broken, so we were sent to go do some more missions to be able to figure out what's going on exactly here. We were then sent to this location, which seems to be like some sentinel guarded area. They're not aggressive to you when you're around the area, but I'm kind of guessing we're going to have to force them to be aggressive. Oh, dude, it's bugged. There's supposed to be another pillar there. Yeah, so all these pillars, we have to destroy them to be able to move on further before we can deactivate this pillar control nodule thing. Thankfully, our new multi-tool is pretty OP, so we take out everything in basically two shots. We're done. All right, let's go over to this machine. No, okay, we need to find this other guard. Where the frick is this guard? Yeah, so there was another guard, and I, I suppose probably because this area is kind of bugged a little bit, we can't seem to find it. Is that it? Oh! There it is. Found it. Yeah, what are you doing there? Okay, just let me finish off. Sweet, now we're done. With that all complete, we could then complete this mission and gain this hard frame right arm and the Minotaur Geobay. The next part of this mission set, we had to then place down and craft our very own Minotaur, which is this Sentinel-like kind of exosuit kind of thing. I think it's pretty damn cool if you ask me. I obviously color coded it and then I had to install it, the new right arm that we just collected. Day 26 we continue on these sentinel missions that we've been set. We get sent to this scientific building that has a door that's shut on it. Looks like we have to blast our way through. This is where we learn the blueprint for the hard frame left arm. Then I head back to base to make sure to install it on our Minotaur. Day 27, we start off by having a little chat with our friend here, the little sentinel. He tries to tell me that he has a name or something, but I'm not too convinced that he needs a name. He tries to call himself Telemon, not Telemon, and then give us some blueprints to, you know, to try and win our favor or something. The Paralysis Mortar. This next mission that we received sends us to another location once again, but this time it's a little bit more interesting. We're sent to go fight and destroy this big thingy. Oh, I don't even know what it is. It kind of resembles another thing from Star Wars. I'm pretty sure this game is, you know, fully inspired by Star Wars. Screw you, you big ass walker drone thingy from Star Wars. Holy crap, it's massive. Oh, there's weak spots. Drop one leg, kill the second leg, fires it down. Yeah, take that sucker. Oh, uh, hmm. okay, that was a little bit easier than I expected. With this big walker defeated, we then gained the pristine brain. It's an important item for this mission set. I then head back to the anomaly and then go speak to our good friend, the lizard head, and give him the pristine brain so he can, you know, do some magic with it. And with that, we receive the hard frame body blueprint. And now the next part of this mission is we needed to make contact with an atlas beacon. And in order to do that, we needed to pulse jump through space until this kind of just popped out of nowhere. I presented it with the hacked brain that we'd gotten earlier from the two-legged, you know, Star Wars thingy, and it gave us the radiant brain, a piece that we needed to be able to put into our new Minotaur to make that hard frame body that we just got earlier. And there's our Minotaur. Now we can upgrade it and make it the fully new Minotaur that, you know, we're supposed to make part of this whole mission set. I then go ahead and place in all the pieces I need to be able to craft the finished product. Now this Minotaur looks completely different to what we used to have, and the cool thing about it, it's completely automatic. It's like our very own companion that we can kind of have wherever we want i won't lie for the rest of this video i really didn't use it that much where now looking back at it i, I probably should have we had one final mission part of this whole mission set with the sentinel a trace of metal it was called to round it all up we had to go defeat those pillar thing that we did earlier and all the guards that are around it defeating these sentinels and then breaking down this entire area means we got to free our sentinel who seems to name himself laylapse from the control of all the sentinels in the entire universe i suppose that's a good thing right as we finished this mission we spotted these pink little balls hanging around the area it's called sack venom kind of a sus name if you ask me pink balls called sack venom i mean you know the only catch with these things is they kind of do a bit of damage to you when you pick them up if you're a little bit too close that is they broke some of my gear and they attract some attention from the sentinels as well so we did the normal strat dug a little hole and waited it out and also repaired the broken gear that we got from you know the sack venom day 29 and we're making a quick stop at our freighter so we can refine some of this living slime into this runaway mold which then once it's fully refined you can refine the runaway mold into nanites it's not as profitable and this kind of takes a long time but hey you know if you've got it, you got it. I then went to go visit the mission agent at the space station, but he didn't have any missions or any like loot worth kind of doing missions for. 
So instead, we spent the rest of the day just finding a system that had some decent missions with some decent loot to get. It wasn't until day 30 that we found this Corvax system that had some decent missions, and though it looked kind of fun too. This particular one that said to kill five sentinels gave us an exosuit expansion unit, basically like a free upgrade for our exosuit. And since we're killing things anyway, I decided to take the kill creatures missions as well. And as luck would have it, the first place that we landed on this planet to do our missions had a cargo pod right there, which basically means we get a free exosuit upgrade as well. It was kind of messed up killing all these creatures that were around but i was also hoping killing them all would kind of trigger the sentinels it never did on this planet so instead i decided to fly back into space and try and find a different planet that had more aggressive sentinels but just like this game does i got a little distracted obviously there were some frigates around that wanted to join me and i couldn't help but try and check them out oh a b class four million yo we can afford that 29 points in a trade yeah that, that's definitely a winner uh it's a c class but it's kind of cheap and it's the explorer frigate we do need the explorer frigate day 31 we landed on this frosty snowy planet and found exactly what we're looking for but it also came with a little bit of a bonus we found this sentinel depot outpost it has these balls in it which was surrounded by sentinels and we only had to kill five of them but the extra bonus was that if we destroy these balls we can get some pretty rare loot from them and when we do destroy them it does call in more sentinels we only need to kill five of them so this was pretty easy and straightforward we then successfully finished all of our missions went back to the mission agent and then handed them all in to collect the items that we gained from it plus i think it increases our standing in certain things i, I haven't really investigated much of like the purpose of these things when we exited the space station we saw that all of our ranks have kind of leveled up that's good right uh, i don't know day 32 we had an exosuit upgrade chart show us the destination of this you know cargo pod you can never have too many slots in your exosuit then for the rest of the day i basically went afk I, f I forgot why i think i had to do something irl and forgot to stop recording and leave the game so yeah that, that kind of just wasted an entire day day 33 we had some of our frigates arrive back from its missions this was one of the first times we had done this so i wanted to see what we could collect from it turns out it can be pretty lucrative or well, somewhat it just depends on the missions that they do i suppose then to keep busy i just did some stuff around the freighter like refine some of this copper into the chromatic metal you always need that on hand and relocate this plant thing because i I wanted to change this room into something a little bit more practical since it was so close to the front of the freighter hmm where should this go oh it might go well in the middle there yeah that looks good i ended up changing this room into the galactic trade room this way if we need to buy and sell some things we can kind of do it on the fly whenever we need just from our freighter now it's not as good as going to space stations because they can hold better materials and stuff but if we need to just sell some basic stuff really quickly it, it's there i started day 34 off by buying this b-class combat specialist frigate it had pretty decent stats and would make a great addition to our team since we have built a good reputation with the gex we can now continue on with the main story missions i'm given an option to give him some units or resist offering units something is forcing me to give it to him of course because i'm a tight ass i don't want to give him any units so i resist offering units all i want is to find out where artemis is in this galaxy but turns out i chose the wrong decisions and offended this little gek guy and uh had to apologize and leave we fly back up into space and speak to Artemis once again. He's expecting us to be able to find him now, but we tell him we can't. It's not that simple. He is obviously quite disappointed, but we have to continue on. We then head on over to a hollow terminus to go and give all the data that we had collected. But once we arrive, Artemis isn't there. Instead, there was this guy. Let's call him Mr. Triangle Head. I try and explain that Artemis is in trouble, but Mr. Triangle Head here doesn't believe me. Eventually, I get through to him and the concerns become real. Artemis is in real trouble. Luckily, Mr. Triangle Head here decides to help us, but wants me to build up my base of operations first. So I guess on day 35, that's exactly what we're doing. Oh, hey there, Mr. Robot Big Scary Guy. For this mission, we actually have to use these building components because we're gonna add some friends to our base. I wanted to add it onto my already built building, but uh, yeah, that doesn't quite work. So I deleted that plan and then moved on. Instead, it's gonna have to be a completely separate building. Now, the reason we're using these building parts is so I can place down this. This is the construction terminal and it requires power, which these building parts, well, you can power them. Now my base is only currently powered by these little bioreactors and it's probably not gonna be enough for us to use. So I use the power of technology in this futuristic world and scan around to find this specific location because the scanner that we have detects high concentrations of electricity that we can farm for ourselves just gotta place down this base module because i can't really build around here then i gotta claim it yeah it's ours put down the electromagnetic generator cha-ching now this electromagnetic generator will pump out some juicy electricity for us i just have to run a cable all the way from there all the way back to our base 
It's not the cleanest job, but it'll do. And since we're pumping out a lot more electricity, I put down some more batteries just in case. You, you never know. They're pretty cheap anyway, so it doesn't hurt. Day 36, I was sent to a strange back room of the space station to meet this little gek. He looks like basically exactly like the gek that we spoke to back at the trade station a little bit earlier. Well, anyway, this guy will basically be our first recruit and work as our construction guy back at base. Ah, uh, there you are. Work, work, gek, dude, whatever. Dude, Except some glass. Oh, he gave me glass. Oh, we can make glass now. How that? We continue to have a little bit of a chitty chat with Mr. Dordar here. And through the conversation, he helps us unlock a few blueprints. I have a feeling that's basically what these guys do. I thought they would do a little bit more, but no, they just help us unlock blueprints that we can essentially just buy at the anomaly anyway. Oh, he wants me to build a science terminal? That's a little bit different. There you go, it's built, you little oompa loompa. With the science terminal built, we warp ourselves to a Corvax system so that we can go and get ourselves, well, um, I guess a scientist. Hey, there he is. We got our own little DJ scientist. Oh, he did the chicken chicken like a DJ. <laughs> All right, what, what does this guy want us to do? Oh, he taught us acid and lubricant. Well, the scientist just gave us blueprints for acid and lubricant. To me, it sounds like he wants to go to a festival and have a sexy good time. Now, because these guys keep sending you back and forth on missions... I'm just going to kind of skip through it all and just uh, show you what happens. First, we go into this cave and collect some marrow bulb. Hand that into the spicy DJ and we get microprocessor and large refiner. Then we're sent to this abandoned building to look for some data or something and hand it over to Mr. Dorda to unlock storage container blueprints. A lot of them. Day 38 and I need to explain something. At this point in my recording, the new interceptor update just came out and I was way too excited. I abandoned everything else we we're doing. And we were working on this. Okay, so I need to find a planet that has the dissonance. This, uh, I don't know, it's gonna be purple or something. Ah, found it. Oh yeah, corrupted sentinels. That's that's all we're looking for. Oh, this is interesting. It looks like flat and desolate, and I guess it is lifeless. It did, did say that. Oh, oh, it's purple. Whoa, are all of these places purple. Oh, those are the crystals. Oh, some copper. Don't mind if I do. Now, if you've been living under a rock this whole time and don't know how the new Interceptor update works, basically there's a whole new mission set. But the only way to trigger these missions is that you really need to rile up the corrupted Sentinels. Now, there's a few ways to get these Sentinels' attention. The easy way, that if you spot a Sentinel out there, just try and fight it. The second way, see this little ball there? If that's a little gas ball, you can kind of see it on the screen. Just pick that up. They'll come after you. But for us, we spotted that there's a dissonance resonator in the distance. Basically means there's Sentinels surrounding it. And whatever this dissonant resonator drops, I want it. How do I take it out? Oh, I gotta shoot it. Oh yeah, that, that does it. Oh, we got an inverted mirror. Oh, I'm getting shot. What else can I collect? Okay. What do you Oh, that freaking thing was invisible. You, you're dead. Oh, whoa, he just pounced on me hard. Invisible. You're dead. Damn. You can still kind of see it though, so it's not... Uh, yeah, whatever. Ah, oh, there it is. What up, big boy? Bro, I can still see you. You crap have invisibility. Take it. <laughs> oh, is he healing you right now? Bro, that's that's unfair. That's unfair. Yeah, you're down. See, I can still see you. You're not hiding very well. Yeah, take that, you stupid idiot. Oh, what did I get? Nanites? Not bad, not bad. Day 39, we return back to our base because we were told to come here for some reason. I forget why. It's somewhere in the recording. Oh, and we have this guy here too. He's a combat specialist. We collected him along the way and built this little bay for him. But it's not as important because we are all focused on the Sentinel Interceptor update. It's now day 40 and I know I said I'm going to be doing Interceptor stuff, but I had some things I needed to take care of before I could really knuckle down and focus on the Interceptor stuff. The first one being my settlement. It needed some stuff done around there. I needed to make a policy decision and wanted to collect the things that it's been passively collecting for me. Then we had to attend to our freighter. Our frigates had returned from their mission, so I wanted to go collect all the loot that they had gathered and send them back on their way. It's good to do this regularly because they basically do this over a long period of time. Some could be like an hour trip, some could be 20 hours IRL. Day 41 in the anomaly, I went up to the Nexus to find this mission. Root out corrupted sentinels. Oh, heck yeah. This is like a proper mission that requires us to do the interceptor stuff. And since the interceptor update was so fresh, we had a couple people join our party. The best thing about this mission is the mission marker literally sends us straight to this little uh, campsite kind of thing. I placed down a save beacon because I want to come back here after we finish this mission. Because there's some pretty cool things you can do in this little area our mission here on this planet is to take out five of these dissonance resonators now my friends have already taken out two and i'm going to take out this third this is a pretty easy task except it does bring some unwanted attention from the corrupted sentinels on this unfamiliar planet i did spot this dinosaur like creature if you're familiar with my youtube channel you'll know that i like dinosaurs and in no man's sky you can tame them and ride them this feels oddly familiar with our brand new dinosaur friend we took out the very last dissonance resonator and now our mission is complete. 
Run, monster, run. Before leaving, we saw that there was another pinged location nearby, and it was a crash sentinel ship. It was only a B-class, but it was my first one, and I really wanted it. Oh, well, this is a different way for us to be able to get our own sentinel ship. How do I get this? Oh, it needs a harmonic brain. And how the heck do I get that? And after watching a quick tutorial on YouTube on how to get this harmonic brain, we continued on doing that. Basically, you need to find a monolith, and we found another one on a different planet, but not too far away. Then you hand over the red damaged brain, and it'll give you back the harmonic brain. Then you return back to the abandoned broken down spaceship, hopefully in better weather than we have now, repair it and claim it. Yo, what are all these? This is kind of different, different to the normal ships we use anyway. The Sentinel ships are kind of built a little bit different. It took us a little while in this playthrough to figure out how it all kind of worked, but it's just the same as a normal ship, but they just name the parts different things really. And check out this bad boy. We now have our very own, very first Interceptor Sentinel ship. Now, although this is really cool, I've now set myself another goal. Before the end of this video, I want to have an S-Class Sentinel ship. Can we achieve it? Let's find out. I then finish this day off by heading back to the Nexus to go hand in this mission to collect my juicy, juicy loot. Day 43 with our new Sentinel ship, I realized this new system that we had found was an outlaw system. And there were some freighters around with some juicy, juicy goodness that we could go and uh, plunder. It was also the Gek Oompa Loompa system. And they weren't too happy of us uh, destroying some of the ships around this area. The problem with the Sentinel ship, it really doesn't do a lot of damage. We need to add some upgrades to it to really do some good damage out there. So I just swapped it out for our Utopian speeder. Man, we're getting some seriously good loot from all of this. We're going to be rich. Oh, oops. Uh, the Geks aren't too happy about this though. Yeah, this got so out of hand. We ended up getting the hostile Gek rank competitor. This basically means that, the, yeah, they, they kind of hate us. Day 44, we got sent to a distress signal and it was an abandoned ship that we could fully claim for ourselves. It was only a C class, but hey, I'll take it. And you know, we like money. It was only worth like 2.2 million units. Not a crazy amount, but hey, we'll take it. Day 45, we returned back to the space station with our Interceptor Sentinel ship. I was curious to see how much this was worth if we were to scrap it. We sold our Sentinel ship for 35 million units and I didn't re really regret it. We got plenty of time to find another one that's a little bit better. And like I said, we're going to find an S-Class before we finish this video. So the following day, I went out to go and explore some different systems to see what we could find. And that's when we stumbled across this extremely strange planet everything including like the land and the flora and fauna was all made out of like hexagons what is this place msb x11 hmm, okay scan that oh the double the one fey best thing about this planet though we did stumble across these big yellow balls they're called curious deposits and when you mine them you get a crazy amount of runaway mold for each one that you collect and if you don't remember runaway mold is something that you can then refine into nanites day 47 we went back to the nexus to see if we can pick up another juicy mission now although this mission doesn't give you any decent loot it asks us to root out the corrupted sentinels so it must be a new mission a part of the new update of course i was curious and wanted to find out what it is we land on another purple planet covered in purple crystals and then discover some of the strangest creatures i've never seen before whoa what the heck is that oh it looks like a magnet apparently they eat ion batteries feed it what what happened tug of the wires oh we gained chewy wires why would they make something that sounds edible that's not edible nah, i can tame it i can ride it okay see you later mr chewy wire robot in this mission i had to destroy more dissonance resonators there's one down two down ah there's the third and lucky last number four we did destroy all the resonators, but it did mean that we pissed off a lot of these sentinels, which was actually my goal because we wanted to get to a five star rating, you know, like Grand Theft Auto, because once you get to a five star rating, this happens. Yeah, that's a sentinel freighter and we need to take it out in spectacular fashion. Luckily, we have our utopian speeder here because if we had a ship that wasn't really up to scratch, this would have been a lot harder than it was. You're going down, buddy. Oh, these are the final shots. Can we do it? <laughs> there we go. Spectacular fashion executed. You are dead. And there we go. The Dreadnought AI Fragment. That is what we were after this whole time. Basically, this item gives us a location for another Sentinel Interceptor ship. Before the day ended, though, I quickly went back to the Anomaly and handed in this mission so I could fully complete it. Then the following day, we're going to head straight on out to find this new Sentinel ship of ours. We get given the coordinates for this little campsite. 
and then we head over to the harmonic interface little computer thingy. You have to work out like a little puzzle quiz kind of thing. And then it will give you the option to be able to deactivate the multi-tool seal and locate the dissonance spikes. This way you get access to be able to take this multi-tool. This one's really not that exciting, but I took it anyway because all I saw was free. And we all like free things in this world, don't we? And whenever I see free, I take it because free is good. Kind of like the ketchup that you get from McDonald's. I went back to the computer thingy so I could get a location on our brand new Sentinel ship. Oh, hell yeah, there it is. There's the new ship. Oh, it's... It's green. I'm not a huge fan of green, but whatever. Oh, it's called Crimson? It's a weird name for a green ship. Oh, it's an A-Class. Let's go. Yo, I cop an A-Class all day, baby. I then went to go find a monolith so we could do the things we needed to do to be able to repair this ship so I could claim it. Then return to this crashed ship, fixed it up, and now it is all ours. Oh, look at that. That's actually fat. That's so much storage space and space for technology. Dude. It may be kind of ugly, but it's pretty cool. I like this ship. Day 49, I flew around this random system until we got rudely erupted by Apollo. He wanted us to get back on track and finish these main missions, I suppose. At least this mission that he sent us on was a quick in and out. Just had to fly to this facility, then break into it, then go speak to this little computer and feed it some materials that we had. Like I said, pretty straightforward. Apollo was happy. Yo, that's the freighter that's getting fought right now? Please be a high class, because that is dope. I want that. It looks like something out of Star Trek. Day 51, I was sad about missing an opportunity to be able to get a decent member of our squadron. So I basically just hung out at this space station until something came along. And it did. This horned Viking owns an A-class ship. And all those writings are in green, so I assume that must be a good thing, right? I recruited him. We now have a member of our squad. Day 52, and we're back on track following the main storyline. We're sent to go find some ley lines, but I think it's just another monolith. But it gives us a strange message and tells us that we need three glyphs in total to continue on. This monolith gives us one, then we need to go and travel to find another one. This monolith tells us that we need to gather three different glyphs. Alright, we activated the second and got our glyph, and now activated the third one. All of those monoliths that we just found led us to this point. This right here, my friends, is a portal. You can literally teleport to anywhere in the entire galaxy. Because I was unsure of where this portal would leave us, I placed down a save beacon so we could find it again later and walk straight on into it. Doesn't seem like the smartest idea, but hey, it's a video game. What, what's the worst that can happen? When we finally come out the other side, we come out in this desolate gray planet. Even look at me, like everything here is just so dull. I won't lie, I feel very uncomfortable. There's a lot of red on the screen, a lot of atlas protocol initiated breach breach warning everything's just going kind of crazy and i'd have no idea where my spaceship is oh crap i just noticed that the portal's closed we stuck wait what? okay oh the atlas we were then teleported to another atlas location we speak to the big glowing ball basically trying to explain to him that we're trying to find artemis we're pretty sure that he's lost and in some danger but the big glowing ball is kind of acting a little sus and doesn't really give us any answers and then teleports us away once again. Now we're on this green planet called Ison025. At least my ship's here. That's a relief. So we board this ship and then head on over to another location on the same planet. And our mission marker leads us to the strange diamond thing. This is where we find out that this is actually Artemis's grave. And Artemis has actually died. This whole time we've just been speaking to a holographic projection of maybe his consciousness so we race to go find another holo terminus so he could speak to apollo and tell him the bad news but apollo doesn't appear instead it's this strange guy called null null explains to us that in some way artemis can be saved but are we really going to trust somebody with a light bulb for a head we then learn the mind arc and the soul engine maybe these blueprints will help us find artemis yo artemis yeah hey, you're there again to craft these new blueprints i needed a resource that i didn't have yet a living pearl which you can find in most oceans and basically any planet that has like water and stuff we then found a living pearl locked away in this clam and collected a few because i imagine they're pretty valuable and we can sell them once i crafted the mind arc i returned back to the hollow terminus to speak to artemis well, well, like his digital version then we use the mind arc on him which i could kind of imagine works like a pokeball we kind of capture his like thoughts or consciousness and then null tells us to return to the stars which he pretty much means just return to the anomaly i then go speak to nada a little friend the space dj and explain the entire situation to him he then tells us we have a pretty important decision to make we can upload artemis's mind to a simulation so he can live on forever but he'll be alone for the entire existence of forever or we could show artemis some mercy and let him rest in peace 
and this is where we head on into the forbidden room that we've never been able to access until now we head on over to this pillar and we have to make our mind up do we upload artemis or do we allow artemis to die oh man i know this is just a game but this is a really hard decision to make i'm gonna allow him to die rest in peace my friend we had finally made a decision to let artemis rest in peace forever even though this is just a video game it was actually a harder decision than i ever thought i'd ever have to make in one stage he'd be stuck alone alive forever but on the other hand we could let him die and rest in peace once i finally exited the anomaly i was contacted by apollo and i told him the news that we let artemis go he was pleased by our decision thankfully and understood it was probably for the best well anyway the sad stuff's out of the way let's get on to doing some cool fun stuff in no man's sky like completing a fancy nexus mission this one seems good we do get 1800 quicksilver from it we just have to fly to this undiscovered moon and rescue a stranded life form seems pretty straightforward we even had a random stranger join us on this mission too too bad just like most missions on this game it's not so straightforward it always just sends us to a random place and we have to find the actual location now it wasn't that far away but we eventually found it, it looked like this random traveler and his spaceship just broke down and just as i expected this mission isn't so straightforward turns out we have to find some buried technology in order to, for us to be able to complete this mission there was this one that was right close by but then we had to scan to find other ones aha uh -huh, third one and it's not even buried yeah thank you broken game once we had collected a few i had to go into the inventory and then scan to find another location for i guess the next part of this mission it felt like it was too far for me to be able to walk over there so i flew over there because we're lazy like that when i arrived we met our little friend here he was surrounded by some of the corrupted sentinels all right so i'm supposed to give my things to this ah he's gonna decrypt it for us pairing downloaded decrypt yep okay now what oh we have to deliver it back with the other bloke all right let's go we returned back to the traveler handed him what he needed and that completed our mission i flew back to the space anomaly handed in our mission so we could gain our 1800 quicksilver then i rushed over to this guy this whole time while doing nexus missions i was saving our quicksilver that we we're getting so we could buy these things the armored shoulder pads and now we have them obviously i didn't waste any time i had to go put them straight on i was way too excited I decided to change our cape out as well and put this backpack on. It was something that came new in the Interceptor update. Now, I love the look of the new shoulder pads, but the backpack is, uh, I'm not too sold on. I took a photo of it anyway. On day 57, I felt somewhat obligated to continue on some of these main story missions. So on this day, we continued on some of the Atlas missions. All these Atlas missions require you to have finished some sort of milestone in the game. By this time in the game, I'd finished most of them, so I could claim these new blueprints that they would give us. It was kind of weird. They were just like glowing colored balls. Day 58, we ran around our freighter, lugging around what looked like a very heavy backpack. No, not really. We just did some stuff around our base. Like I used one of the Savage Frigate modules so we could learn the teleport chamber. And of course, I'm going to install it. So now that we can teleport really from wherever. We don't need a main base now that we have a freighter base, but it's nice to have one. I also decided to switch up our plants a little bit. I wanted to have a little bit more variety and not just have Gravitino balls around. Although they're good, but it's good to have variety. You never know when we're going to need everything else. Day 59, we searched around some more systems so we could find another one of these things. You know, the Atlas things space stations I, I don't really know what they're called the atlas interface there we go just so we could get another glowing colored ball this time it's blue uh, and i wasn't really feeling the backpack it just kind of didn't work for me so we went back to the cape design yeah that's better in my opinion i like this day 60 we basically spent the entire time just searching around different space stations to see what kind of gear that they could give us to upgrade starting with this gex space station i bought an s-class photon cannon module this viking system didn't have anything that we needed we could upgrade our exosuit so we did that oh yeah we filled up our slots and this callback system actually had a few good s-class upgrades but nothing that we could use right now it's day 61 and yes i keep getting distracted by all the other things in this game it's time to focus on the main mission the only problem is i got so damn distracted that i realized i'm actually really far away from where i'm supposed to be and have no way to teleport to the mission destination it would literally take me forever to warp all the way there but then i go into the mission menu and i realize this oh you can restart it i didn't realize that so you, you can actually come back here because i'm trying to travel this place and i lost it because i around too much so you can actually come back to the restart to this mission and restart now that we're back on track the first part of this mission sends us to a monolith and this monolith gives us coordinates to a portal even though we're stuck in a blizzard we make our way pretty quickly over to this portal ah uh, yes we have now arrived at this portal 
Before you can actually use a portal, you have to feed it all of the materials that it requires. It's a tedious process and can be annoying if you don't have everything, but because naturally I'm a resource hoarder, I had everything we needed. So A plus for me or give me the new scout badge or whatever kind of award that you give people that, you know, are good at hoarding things. There's the address. Come and visit the place that I have once visited. Now our mission wasn't to activate this portal and go through it. We were sent here to gather those glyphs that you see on the screen right now so that we could give it to Apollo at the Hollow Terminus nearby. Once we met Apollo again, we gave him the glyphs to the new world. I think he's supposed to come here and meet us. I thought that we had finished speaking to Apollo, but when I looked back, I saw that Mr. Lightbulb Head was still here. He asked me for my help. He seems to think that something is happening to the universe that's caused by the Atlas. And I guess it's up to us to figure that out. Mr. Lightbulb Head sends us to this computer so that we can retrieve some data that might help us find out what exactly is going on with the Atlas. But instead of giving us some answers that we're desperately after, it gives us some coordinates to go there to find out who knows what. But unfortunately, this observatory is under attack from some pirates. After an epic battle, we are then sent to this crashed freighter. Hopefully we'll finally get some answers. We approach the Star Wars droid and hopefully it gives us something that we need. It basically explains how it was out in space one day and then it was viciously attacked from some sentinels. Maybe they're the answer to all the problems in this universe. We return back to Mr. Lightbulb Head and share our discoveries. Then we find out this freighter is actually a wreck from a parallel universe. Yeah, this story is getting kind of crazy. We learn that the sentinels once served Atlas and that they were the guardians of reality. But after some time, the sentinels ended their service with Atlas. Apparently it was us. The travelers who corrupted existence day 63 all the way to day 66 we were tasked with finding out more information from all the three races in no man's sky the viking the corvax and the gex but none of these races would give us anything without something in return thus us spending all this time retrieving items for them and slaying their enemies go down you bastard go down yes Day 67, we traveled back to go and meet Mr. Lightbulb Head and tell him everything that we had discovered from the three races in No Man's Sky. Which, in summary, basically is that the little Oompa Loompa Geeks are evil little bastards. They super worshipped the Atlas and with that destroyed the Corvax home planet. But since the Corvax are really smart scientists, they somehow rewired the genetics of the Gex to make them more interested in trade and that kind of stuff rather than war and destruction. But just as we were saying goodbye to Mr. Lightbulb Head, we get a distress signal that says don't be like that. You are not alone. There's a lot of lore in this game and it's kind of pretty cool. There's more to it than I'd realized. Let's continue exploring it. Day 68, yes, and we're still on the planet that we were just talking with Mr. Lightbulb Head on, trying to find out where this distress signal is coming from. But once we land on the planet once again, we are then attacked by these big crazy worm thingies. Oh, I know these things, the biological horrors. Kill them, you get something called, uh, what are they called? The flesh rope, yeah, yeah, yeah. So flesh rope is actually crazily valuable. You can refine that into nanites and like turn it into a crap ton of them. Typically this is very dangerous, but we have a pretty high powered weapon, so it wasn't that bad. We eventually discovered where the distress signal was coming from and it's an abandoned ship. Once we approach it, we figured we'd find Apollo, but Apollo's not there. We are then instructed to go and find another ley line I guess we're gonna go through another portal soon. But I can't leave this abandoned ship all by itself. After all, it's free money. But as I take it up into the sky, I realize the main mission mark is not that far away. So we might as well go and do that. And then we finally find the signal. It's another portal. I head on over to the portal, feed it all the resources it could possibly want, and watch the gate open. Ooh, look at that. The portal's opening. You know, I wouldn't recommend doing this, kids, but I'm going in. We warped through this portal and then it took us to, well... What the heck? We're in outer space. Oh, there's an Atlas thing. Our life support's low. We're dying? Ooh, we're swimming. We're swimming. What is this? Oh, well, that's better, uh, I think. We then come face to face with this big sphere, and he finally speaks a language we can understand. Well, he does play back an audio recording, so that's probably why. But then we are forced to face judgment for all the decisions that we had made in our journey up to this point. And because I allowed Artemis to die, I am merciful. But then I allowed Apollo to go through a portal, which I, I kind of don't remember doing that. We ultimately discover that this entire universe is just a simulation run by this Atlas guy. It's as if it's a video game. How odd. I finished my conversation with the Atlas with these last words. 
16. And then I am teleported once again to a random location. This time in the snow. Surrounded by aggressive creatures by the looks of it too. Oh man, every time I get teleported to random places like this, I'm always so far away from my spaceship. I arrived back in my spaceship. And that's when I remembered it's the one that was abandoned <laughs> that I kind of forgot about. We then board our ship and then go through some important game dialogue. I think we're getting really close to finishing this main mission. Day 70, we head on over to a hollow terminus in hopes that we can tell the other travelers what's going on, that this is all a simulation. But once we arrive, there's just warning symbols and network failures going on. We attempt to broadcast, but it doesn't work. Now we were given the objective called the Purge, and it wants us to progress towards the galactic center. Our journey's not over yet, folks. So I guess you're probably wondering, how do we get to the galactic center? Well, I don't know. But for now, we're going to go and visit Nada, the space DJ, and explain to him that the Atlas simulation is failing and everything will crumble soon. Strangely though, he didn't seem too bothered by the news. Guess it's kind of part of his programming. Back in space, we receive a message and are given three options. Hmm, do I seek the final interface, complete the Atlas path, or explore the galaxy? We chose to complete the Atlas path and see what we could discover through this mission set. It is kind of part of the main storyline. Now, I really don't want to bore you with the nitty gritty details of these next days. Because, well, the Atlas missions are very much the same. Find an Atlas station somewhere in the universe, head in, talk to whatever might appear, and collect a colored sphere. Until that is, we arrive at this Atlas station. This time, we were not met by anything, just an altar. And then we were given two options. Birth a new star? I mean, I've had a big meal today, but that sounds damn painful. Or walk away and return to the galaxy. Let's birth a new star. Let's birth a new star. I mean, how hard could it be? With this, we were now given the blueprint for a star seed. And showing those ingredients, it seems pretty cheap to be able to create an entire star. Oh, we have to install that star seed or into our empty inventory slots. Maybe we are really giving birth. And now looking at the missions, we were told to go and reach the black hole. Now, if this wasn't a space game and someone told me I had to go find a black hole, I'd be thinking something was kind of sus. Oh, we found a black hole. But is, is that black hole sucking that planet into it? This seems like a bad idea, but I'm going to go in the black hole. Oh, well, what do you know? Now the planet. And with all of that, I double checked my mission log and found out that was the end of the Atlas missions, I think. But I kind of feel like that's not the last time we'll see the Atlas. And with all that time taken, we had then collected 16 different glyphs for the main mission that sends us to the final interface portal right here. I go ahead and activate this portal and then the Atlas protocol is initiated. Here we go, walking into another portal that I have no idea where it goes. Seems like a great idea. Not really. Oh. This place looks, uh, interesting. Now what do we do, Mr. Mission Log? It says to locate it into the final portal. Like, we literally just did that. Holy crap, what's that noise? 16? 15? 14? 13? Oh crap, everything's coming to an end. Damn, we haven't even, uh, we're not even close to 100 days yet. It was you guys! It was your fault! It was your fault! Hi. Dude. Ah, we're back at the Atlas. Once speaking to the Atlas, we are given three options once again. Ask if there's another way, reset the simulation, or refuse the atlas. I don't want to reset it, so I ask for another way. But seems like there's no other way. Let's reset the simulation and see what happens. Oh, well, that was less dramatic than I thought. Oh, we can go down there? This is kind of different. We are then presented with four spheres that look like they had whole galaxies inside of them. Maybe we had to make our own choice up to what was going to happen now. They were all different types of galaxies. This white one is the rebuilt galaxy. The blue one is the exhausted galaxy, green represents a serene galaxy, and red represents a burning galaxy. Now red is my favorite color, but I ain't going into no burning galaxy. We decided to reset the simulation in the rebuilt galaxy, but then we were stuck staring at this screen for like the next 10 minutes. Kind of weird and pointless, I think. Eventually that screen ended, and we were dumped on another planet, Epreep Alpha. Oh, what's that? We get a remembrance sphere orb thingy? I wonder if this has any purpose. Oh, what? Analysis fire is da damaged? Oh crap! Everything's broken! What a ripoff! They sent us to the middle of nowhere with everything broken? Like everything! Yeah, well, it looks like we're stuck on this planet. Guess we gotta try and find our ship. Thankfully, it wasn't that far away, and we could find it right here. But yes, unfortunately, the entire thing is ruined and wrecked. And because it's a sentinel ship, I don't have all the required materials to be able to fix it. Instead, I had a big brain moment and just summoned in our utopian speeder. Take that, No Man's Sky. Now we have a fully functional S-Class ship. With all my gear broken, I went to the nearest space station and bought a ridiculous amount of wiring looms. 
All of this so I could basically start repairing my entire exosuit and my multi-tool. Wiring looms are basically the main ingredient that we need and I can't craft them myself, you always have to buy them. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, Aztec, the main story's over, what now? Well I still have three goals that I'd like to complete, but I never mentioned them up to this point because one of those goals includes you, the viewer. Goal number one, I want to find an S-Class Sentinel ship. Goal number two, I want to find an S-Class Sentinel multi-tool. And goal number three, which will probably take me the longest, I want to find the perfect paradise planet to set up a community planet that you can come and join in and build on as well. I'd love to showcase some really cool builds on maybe one of my streams sometime. I did find this planet. It's pretty cool, but it feels kind of barren for a paradise planet. And the orange is kind of weird to me so we'll keep looking day 83 i made a quick little stop off at our original base mainly because i wanted to access a portal and because i had placed down a save beacon near the local portal i knew i could get to one easily and for your own records if you look at the screen there that's the coordinates for this planet and this system that i started at if you want to come and visit you're more than welcome now why do i need this portal well, that's because I wanted to go visit a friend of mine's community planet. Now, just out of respect, I can't share the address. I will ask her if we can. And this is it. This is Miss Vadim's community planet. Make sure you go follow her on Twitch and subscribe to her on YouTube. It's pretty cool to look at with the glowing red grass and bubbles. Before moving on though, I set up a little outpost for myself here and a teleporter so I could access this place whenever I needed. And a teleporter so I could access this place easily. It was also close to a portal if I ever needed it, as I forgot to set one up at the portal just before. Now that we had an easy to access portal, I could move around on the entire galaxy as easy as I wanted, which is going to make the next goal of this 100 days so much easier. Except we have one problem. The place that we need to get to isn't actually in this dimension. But the place that we're going, we can actually access from the anomaly. You see, I did a little bit of digging around Reddit and found a location to an S-Class Sentinel ship. But lucky for us, one of the community highlight bases is in the Isentam Galaxy. So not only do we get a quick teleport to the Isentam Galaxy, we get to check out a pretty cool build. Getting to the Isentam Galaxy is one thing. Now we need to find a portal so we can get around it to get to the planet that we actually need. So we find this monolith, give it a Viking dagger as a gift, and then it'll tell us the location of a portal. It only seems easy because of the power of editing. It, this actually took me a long time. Then we fly over to the portal, which it kind of seems like a lot of people have visited already. And then punch in these glyphs that are showing on the screen now. <laughs> Holy crap. All these people must have come here for the Sentinel ship as well. I mean, it's S-Class. I can understand it's probably popular. Reddit does give you the coordinates for the Sentinel ship, but I, I was kind of confused on how to read the longitude and latitude thing. So I kind of just guessed by going to visit these message things. Eventually, we found one that said Sentinel S-Class ship. And I assumed that was it. And here we have it, the broken down Sentinel ship. It's just sitting on somebody else's landing pad. That's kind of weird, but hey, whatever. Also, now that you know where it is, let me know in the comments below if you get this ship as well. I then do all the required things to be able to fix this ship and then head back to go and collect it. Only this time it's in the correct spot. Weird No Man's Sky bug. Look at all that inventory space. The three supercharged slots, they're in pretty good spots too. This ship once fully upgraded will be really good. Day 87 with our brand new S-Class Sentinel ship, we went straight to the closest space station. Now why would I do such a crazy thing? We just got a brand new spaceship. We need to upgrade it ASAP. Uh, two problems though. We don't have a lot of nanites, and this infra knife module isn't really what we're looking for. So instead, I flew back to our freighter and inspected our original Sentinel ship. Remember, it was damaged pretty bad. I kind of wanted to see if I could repair some things and then pull the items out of this and then put them into my new Sentinel ship. Unfortunately, it wasn't that simple. Day 88, I fell into the distraction trap that this game gives you and found this planet that had phosphorus. So uh, yeah, I mined it. And I also used a planetary chart so I could find this drop pod. <laughs> Oh crap, what the heck? My wings are stuck inside it. Still access it? Ah, oh, I'm good. Day 89, I went back to my friend's community planet so I could access her portal. Then I punched in these coordinates. You should probably go back and screenshot it if you can. So I could travel to this location that looks like a lot of people have been here already. Also, check this out. I upgraded my scanner. So look how many units we get from scanning things. Anyways, you're probably curious to, as to why we are here. Stuck on this random planet that seems like it's kind of heavily populated by people. Well, basically, we're looking for this. Because this holds, yes, goal number two. The S-Class multi-tool. We just have to work out this pretty simple, easy puzzle first. All right, what do we do? We have to scan the memory registers. All right, four plus 11 is 15. Then we go seven, nine, four. Okay. We punch all the glyphs in and get it all correct. Now we are given access to be able to deactivate the multi-tool seal. Ooh, we have it. We have it. 
S class multi tool, 4,000 damage potential. Let's go. Is it better? Not currently. We're going to have to upgrade it. We'll just swap some of the parts over. Is that how it works? I don't know. Now, the thing is, once you complete that terminal puzzle and you can open up the weapon seal, it actually gives you an option to locate dissonant spikes, which basically just means you can find a sentinel spaceship on the planet now of course i couldn't leave without being able to claim ourselves a free sentinel ship regardless of what kind of ship it is it's probably not going to be better than what we have it's still going to be worth a lot of money so yeah basically the next day we just continued working on trying to get this once i finally fixed it we could fully check it out to see if it was any good ah uh, it's just a c-class eh. That's okay. It was really hard to see the ship the whole time because it was always in the blizzard. But once we took off, we could see a kind of, well, the back of it. And it has similarities to our current S-Class Sentinel ship. Maybe it's a little cooler. I don't know. And I guess we'll never know because it's worth 42 million units. That's a score. Let's go. We're rich, baby. Day 91. This is where I began to look for a planet that we can call our community planet. For you, the viewer, to be able to come and check out and possibly build a base on and hang out. All that kind of stuff. I literally kept looking for the longest amount of time. Eventually, I did find this planet. It's a paradise planet and it has some pretty decent resources that are on it naturally. But does it look good? I mean, red water. That's kind of weird, but different. Lots of crystals, nice grass, but I like it. I named this planet the Aztec Tribe Lands. Then, of course, to make sure that all of you guys can get here easily, I located the portal. Ah, uh, here you go, everybody at home. This is the address to our community planet. Please come one, come all, do whatever you want, and build and have fun whatever i still had several days left in this 100 days challenge so i spent some of this time putting this base together i call it the long big shaft 2.0 and if you want to find it i'll have a way for you to find it just portal to this area you'll find it then i went out to go and explore all the systems around this particular system by following the line that leads you to the galactic core for two reasons reason number one i wanted to name all the planets around these systems after all my patreons to thank them for supporting me all this time and reason number two I wanted to build some resource outposts. It's always good to have what feels like unlimited resources in this game. 